Hi everyone and thanks for watching today's video. Today I'm going to talk about three different conditions all related to the bottom end, the anus. One is the abscess and one is a sinus, one is a fistula. Now why three together? Because um, in my view I think three are interrelated so they are closely linked to each other. So we take one at a time. So first thing we are going to talk about is the anal abscess. Abscess as you know is a collection of pus. Um, like a little spot we get on the skin becomes bigger and you get a collection of pus. Same thing if I have drawn the buttock there, so that's the right cheek, that's the left cheek, that is the opening of the anus, the bottom end. The last two centimeters going in or through three centimeters is the anal canal which is part of the anus and above it which becomes like a big cavity is the rectum. So the thing we are focusing about is around the anal area. Now there are two ways of developing an anal abscess. Either it can develop or start very close to the skin. So the first thing they get is a small bit of infection, redness, usually very tender. So if you sit on it, it's going to hurt. You touch it, it's going to hurt and becomes a little red spot in the bottom end. And they usually appears because of infection in a hair follicle because we all have hair on the bottom end and one of them gets infected. Now there are two, three things that can happen to it. Either one of the things is it will settle down after a day or two. We sit in a bath, uh, keep it tidy, clean, it settles down. If it's not settling down, we might get a course of antibiotics and hopefully it will calm it down. However, sometimes we don't do anything about it. It grows and grows and grows and becomes a big, big pocket of pus. So it contains yellow gunky stuff as we have all seen in our lives with infection and it becomes a very tender, very hard and red area on the skin, next to the skin around the external opening, which is called the anal abscess. Now the second way of developing this abscess is not from the outside, not from the buttock, but from the inside of the anal canal. So that is the anal canal, which is the last two or three centimeters just above our bottom opening. Again, a little spot appears inside. So when we go to the toilet, it hurts. Um, if we touch it, it hurts. And this usually happens because infection in one of the glands inside the bottom is called the anal gland. And because it's not a clean area, poo goes past this, so it's very difficult to keep it clean. Again, two or three things happen, can happen to it. One thing that can happen is it uh, remains um, untreated and it settles down on its own. We have a course of antibiotic, go to the doctor and it settles down on its own. The third thing that can happen is it grows and it does not settle down and becomes a big pocket of pus. But this time it's not close to the outer end, but it's close to the inside. So the only way of knowing that there is a pocket of pus in there is to examine from inside, either with a finger or with a camera or whatever other way of feeling it. And that is the way uh, to diagnose an anal abscess. These abscesses, um, early ones can be diagnosed on the outside quite easily, just looking at it or feeling it or touching it. However, inside ones, because they're not visible on the outside, a bit more tricky to diagnose and can sometimes require a scan like an MRI scan or something of the bottom end to diagnose an internal anal abscess. What else can happen to the anal abscess? So now we've got a pocket of pus either close to our skin or on the inside. It's not being treated. So sometimes what happens that nature takes its course. Like if we get a spot on the skin, sometimes it bursts and the pus comes out. Same thing happens down here. Sometimes these abscesses they burst. You can see it bursting out on the skin because this is close to the skin, and uh, all the pus and everything comes out. And what it does, because everything, all the gunk has come out and the pressure is gone, the pain tends to settle down or becomes much less than it was before. Same thing can happen with the internal anal abscess. This can burst on the inside of our bottom, and that way, what happens? Suddenly, the pressure goes away and the pain becomes much less and you can people sometimes pass pus in with their motions uh, gunk comes out yellow stuff comes out and that makes the abscess settle down sometimes what can happen is these abscesses they can 
become much bigger. So it's like a big abscess pocket of pus inside, whether it arises from the outside or from the inside, most frequently from the inside and they become quite big and they can burst both on the inside of the bottom and on the outside at the same time. So now we come to our second topic, which is um, the anal sinus and the third topic, which is the anal fistula and what is the difference between the two. So before we go and talk about the anal sinus and a fistula, we're just going to try and explain what a sinus means and what is the difference between a sinus and a fistula. So I've drawn a little hill over here, like a little mountain, and I'm trying to dig a tunnel from one side of the mountain to the other side. Like we go in a train, go into a tunnel, or in a car, we go into a tunnel. So we have got hole on one side of the mountain, which is the entrance, and on the other side, which is the exit. However, at the moment, the tunnel is only blind. It's not connected to the other side. So if you go in, you can't go anywhere. If you go in on this side, we can't go anywhere. So it's a blind ending tunnel. So sinus is a blind ending tunnel. It hasn't connected to the other side as yet. So that is a sinus. So this leads us to the concept of fistula. Now, what is a fistula? Now you can see the same tunnel. I can go in from one side and I can come out of the other side. So the two ends are connected to each other. So this surface of the mountain is connected to this surface of the mountain. So the openings are on two outer sides or two outer surfaces of the mountain. So when the opening is through and through and connecting two different surfaces, it is called a fistula. Now fistulas can happen anywhere in our body and we'll talk about those as we go along. We spoke about them in my previous videos in Crohn's disease, etc. However, we're going to talk about them in the future when we come to different parts of the body again. Today, we are just going to talk about a sinus or a fistula in the anus, the bottom end. But remember the concept of it. Fistula goes through and through on two sides, two surfaces, from one surface to the other. Sinus goes only halfway or a little bit inside and then stops. Can't go any further because there is no connection between the two ends. So first thing is anal sinus we're going to talk about. So we had a little spot on the skin, a little abscess. It didn't settle down. We didn't take care of it, didn't have antibiotics. It became a big pocket of pus on the inside. So it's very tender, very red, very painful and swollen as well. So we can feel it. After a few days or a week or so when it still hasn't settled down and my antibiotics might be tried but once it becomes an abscess antibiotics don't always take care of it then it suddenly bursts as you can see it bursts all the pus comes out but it's left with an opening in here but that opening comes in like i explained before in the mountain it does not go anywhere it comes to a little pocket but can't go anywhere else so it's a blind ending pocket inside which is opening on the outside so the patient can feel next to the external opening next to the anus a little um, like a hole next to the bottom and through which when they squeeze or when they go to the toilet pus comes out or sometimes blood little bit of blood comes out and that is called an anal sinus now next thing is what is an anal fistula as I explained before in the mountain, if the tunnel is going through and through and is touching the both sides or two different sides of the mountain, then it is called a fistula. Now you can see, started with a little spot, became a pocket of pus. That pocket of pus became bigger and bigger, did not get resolved or did not settle down. Burst on the outside, so there's an opening on the outside and also burst on the inside. It can burst either inside the anus, so it can burst even higher up into the rectum. And now we have got a situation in which there's a cavity inside, but is opening on two different surfaces, so inside and outside both. Like we had a tunnel in the mountain opening on both sides. This is called an anal fistula. 
So what symptoms do we get from the anal fistula? So as you can see, it's connected both from inside and outside. So whatever is inside our bottom will not just come through the opening of our anus, but can also find way through this connection because it's like a tunnel can go through here as well, depending on the size of the hole. If the hole is very small, things can't go through that easily. If the hole is quite big, then whatever is in the rectum like poo or even wind and it will pass through here and the patients can feel that the underpants can get soiled with poo which comes out of this hole not from the opening of the anus but from this hole and also sometimes they pass wind through it so bubbles of air come out sometimes blood comes out as well but bleeding is never a major issue so what is the treatment for all these conditions uh, abscesses early abscesses especially small ones they can settle down on their own over the course of antibiotics once they become quite big then antibiotics don't normally control them if they burst out like a sinus then they sometimes settle on their own because the pus is gone however if the hole persists and the pus keeps coming out over weeks or months then it will require lancing under general anesthetic, cutting it and opening it up to clean it out. Most fistulas, which are connecting from both inside and outside, because there is always infection coming in from the rectum with poo and everything else that comes with it, they don't tend to settle down on their own and they require usually an operation to make them heal. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer those questions the best I can. Thanks again for watching and please remember to subscribe and click the bell icon. Thanks for watching.